Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Amanda Pham. I'm the Executive Director for the Redevelopment Authority here in Springfield. And we're here today to announce the formal uh, release of a solicitation for sale and redevelopment of its portfolio on Main Street. These properties were acquired by the Authority back in late 2021 and after years of disinvestment, real estate speculation, and foreclosure in an attempt to reposition uh, the buildings um, towards arresting uh, further neighborhood deterioration. These significant historic structures at one of the most prominent intersections in the city, state, and Maine, directly across from MGM Springfield, Mass Mutual Center, the two downtown biggest economic engines, could not be ignored. This gives us the opportunity to determine the future ownership of these buildings and ensure their redevelopment and uh, consistency with our goals and objectives of the master planning efforts that have been made to date. The authority has been facilitating development through the Court Square Urban Renewal Plan for over 50 years and will continue to be here to aid the city and development community in furthering economic development. With the Main Street Convention Center plan memorialized in the recent Court Square Amendment 12 and continued implementation efforts by the city, we are seeing cohesive and inclusive investments throughout. City leadership know how critically uh, important a vibrant downtown is to the success and sustainability as a special place for people to live, work, visit, and invest in. Through this solicitation, we seek to attract strong development teams with proven success in similar markets and adaptive reuse projects uh, to join in on this important endeavor. The Springfield Redevelopment Authority looks forward to working with those who share this vision and embrace the immense potential in this district. Uh, and the authority <clears throat> could not advance without his support, leadership, and acknowledging the challenges surrounding urban development. Um, and now I would like to welcome the mayor to say a few words and thank him for his efforts. Thanks, Amanda. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda Farm, who again is the first female director ever in the Springfield Redevelopment uh, history, and I was proud to appoint her. Amanda. <laughs> to my Chief Development Officer, uh, Tim Sheehan, uh, for his uh, great continued efforts. Uh, David Gibbons uh, from Mass Convention, Executive Director of Mass Convention Visitor Bureau. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. He's been a great, he's going to be speaking, he's been a great, great partner. Great, great partner, and we appreciate that. To Armando Feliciano, my longtime chairman of the SRA board, who uh, will be saying a few words to Armando, thank you. To Leo Florian, heart and soul of the South End, has lived there all his life. He's the president of the South End Citizens Council. He'll tell you uh, uh, the impact of this. Betsy Johnson, Armory Quadrangle Mattoon Street, she'll be speaking too. She'll tell you the uh, impact of this. And of course, the president and COO of uh, MGM Springfield, Chris Kelly, on the impact. And by the way, the place was packed down there yesterday with the sports book uh, being up. Uh, Boku Buya from uh, Springfield Parking Authority is also here. Andy Crane, who's our representative on the, uh, the Mass Convention uh, Board. We appreciate that immensely. I want to give a special shout out to uh, Focus Springfield. Brendan, halfback, uh, Chris Carey, Josue the Airman, wait until you see this video done by Focus Springfield and uh, also uh, T-Bow uh, Productions. Absolutely uh, tremendous. This is an exciting uh, announcement on this RFQ, and I have to put my uh, cheaters on here. Uh, these properties encompass 113 to 117 State Street, 1135 to 1155 Main Street, 11 to 21 Stockbridge Street totals 130,000 square, gross square feet. Uh, back in two, uh, 2021, working with uh, Chief Development Officer Tim Sheehan and the SRA and, and the financial side with TJ Plant, I instructed them we had to take the bull by the horns. Uh, these properties here were uh, real estate speculation. Uh, the prior owner just sat on these properties. There was no investment, a disinvestment had occurred, and ultimately the bank foreclosed on it. So we decided to move in to become a temporary property owners 
to start to strategize how we can put this out uh, through an RFQ and dictate, uh, dictate economic uh, development and set the table to make it very enticing. We've been very successful in public and private partnerships, as you know, you know, recently about $1.5 billion of real estate investment has come in to the city of Springfield because we are able to do that public, set the table public-wise, and then have the majority of the investment be uh, private moving forward. So with that, when you look upon it, this is the uh, city's Main Street Convention District Master Plan development and uh, economic uh, investment in the whole surrounding business uh, area. And when you look at it, here's my goal here. My, my goal is to uh, uh, synergy, synergy, uh, to create that synergy and even more investment and involvement, not only with MGM and with the Mass Mutual Center, but my dream and my goal is to create a promenade down our South Main Street District into the South End District uh, night and day and day and night to experience the Italian American delicacies that are down there. Our other goal, and we've talked about it for a while and we were moving on it, as Chris Kelly will tell you and uh, all the other representatives here and Tim Sheehan, prior to COVID-19 about activation of the streetscape, sidewalk scape area on the Main Street going down toward the South End area. So that is my main goal, that you're going to feel comfortable walking up and down there besides going to the downtown uh, Restaurant Row District, the Mass Mutual Center, shows at MGM, but making a promenade, a promenade area. And my goal is to get Anna and Leo, Daniele, La Fuentina, uh, to stay open late at night so people could go down there for a little espresso, cappuccino, a shriadel, you name it. And then really that starts to highlight uh, the area, and it also starts to highlight uh, more investment coming down there. So as we continue to move forward, this video is going to knock your socks off. And with that, do we have a drum roll, please? Let's put that video on, Josue. Let's do it. There aren't too many places that can offer the quality of life that this one can. And right now, post-COVID, we're really starting to see a significant amount of investment, a significant amount of activity. Hi, I'm Mayor Dominic Sarno, and I'm inviting you to the incredible growth and opportunities right here in downtown Springfield. We are in a gateway city, and when you think about gateway cities, three words often jump to your mind. You think about opportunity, you think about potential, and you think about momentum. We saw the chance to bring together a 14-acre parcel. We've got the only Four Diamond Hotel. We've got a bowling center, Roar Comedy Club, Tap Sports Bar, Regal Cinemas. We are a regional anchor for Western Massachusetts. We view ourselves at MGM Springfield as a catalyst for growth in the downtown area. We look for opportunities to partner with folks in the area that can allow our downtown renaissance to continue.
From where I'm standing, $1.5 billion worth of investment is advancing, all furthering the district to help set the stage for new investments, beginning with our properties. The historic and prominent Clock Tower building at 113 State Street and the Colonial Block building just steps away at 1155 Main Street represent incredible development opportunity along Main Street, directly across from MGM Springfield, the Mass Mutual Center, 1331 Elm Street, Court Square, and the highly successful Stock Bridge Court residential complex. The buildings in their current state offer over 130,000 square feet of development with ground floor retail. Our job is to drive economic development. So events that we've done here are much stronger than they were pre-COVID. We had so many repeat events and they were better than ever. And then on top of that, the Thunderbirds had this, you know, run to the finish. The new garage will be five stories, 350,000 square feet, and accommodate between 800 and 900 vehicles. That parking structure at Mass Mutual has this outdoor plaza space that's going to allow for activations of everything from, you know, farmers markets to concerts, and just the ability to bring people downtown. We look at the business of bringing people together. It's a great thing for the city, and it's a great thing for properties like MGM. We're right here in the core of downtown Springfield. The city is also investing another $6 million to beautify this area, which will make this project even better. This development behind me would not have happened if it wasn't for the cooperation of City Hall and the state of Massachusetts. In development, time is money, and getting the public approvals to commence construction is critical to a project meeting its market window of opportunity. Government could not have done this project alone. It would have been twice as much money, but private enterprise couldn't do it alone either. Development is a collaborative endeavor. Springfield recognizes that successful urban redevelopment requires strong and focused planning. The city leadership has embraced economic development by doing a whole lot of planning and thinking about their vision for this part of the city. We crafted a master development plan to guide development activity in this dynamic downtown district. The city and SRA are actively implementing that plan through key property acquisitions, regulatory changes, and significant investment in the district's public realm and infrastructure. It's not a one-note downtown. This is woven together, and you knew what you were going to connect to because there's a master plan. Our planning accentuates the importance of enhanced mixed-use development, entertainment, retail, and multifamily housing. Springfield is a great market with strong roots, a diverse community, and incredible assets. We are fully committed to implementing our plan and facilitating economic development through these property offerings. We are seeking an experienced development team to participate in this two-part solicitation with a request for qualifications and approach phase and then advancing a short list of teams to a formal request for proposals process. Springfield stands ready to work with developers with an expedited permitting and entitlement process. No one, no place is easier to do business than right here in Springfield, Mass. Springfield is a very business-friendly town. Springfield's the place to be. We have the ability to offer a quality of life at a low cost to entry that some of these larger cities just simply can't match. Come be part of the excitement in Springfield. Work with key partners such as MGM, the Mass Mutual Center, and many, many more. We're ready to work with you. Be part of downtown Springfield. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Uh, we really took a very unique and different approach to this marketing uh, for the solicitation to match the uniqueness of these properties. Uh, with a regional and national marketing effort for the solicitation, we thought it was imperative to showcase all that Springfield has to offer. We hope that activation of these buildings will jumpstart uh, future development in, in a surrounding this area. 
I would like to thank everyone who helped put this video together, including those of you who have participated in interviews, uh, as well as Brett providing graphic support. Uh, special thanks for the SRA Chair, Armando Feliciano, our Mayor, uh, Chief Development Officer Tim Sheehan, MGM Springfield, Mass Mutual, uh, Opal Wynn, and especially Focus Springfield, who did a tremendous job uh, doing a ton of drone footage uh, and the graphic enhancements through uh, Chris Tebo, uh, Steve, and Josue, um, and also Judy with uh, Spirit of Springfield. So we thank you all for all the help. This solicitation is the product of years of planning by the city's Office of Planning and Economic Development, our consultant Chicago Consulting Studios, and with input from our anchors and area stakeholders. So thank you very much for that. Um, now I would like to invite the executive director, uh, Dave Gibbons, uh, from Mass, uh, Mass Convention Center Authority to say a few words, and also would like to thank you for embracing our design plans on your new and upcoming uh, garage project. <coughs> Thank you, thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for inviting me out today. And uh, on behalf of our board and one of our board members, Andy Crane, uh, is with me today. Uh, it has just been such a pleasure to do our part of the master plan because you had the context of the master plan. You weren't planning in a vacuum. And this RFP, which is probably one of the most, or RFQ, one of the most beautifully packaged pieces of marketing for real estate I've ever seen, and I applaud that. Um, that's the type of work from City Hall that's made our job easier. So uh, both our projects, the garage and the event space beside it, and the State Street door, which will be facing the clock tower, are both underway, and we look forward to getting them done as rapidly as we can. But thank you very much. Now, just to the southwest of our properties is another anchor, MGM Springfield. Through its porous urban design, we look forward to revitalizing the synergies and full potential of this area um, through the activation of these properties. So uh, MGM's president uh, and COO, Chris Kelly. That was a very cool video. Um, and I consider myself a little bit of a history person. I love to read about this area. And I, for one, did not know that we invented the monkey wrench. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I learned something this morning. Um, and also want to echo um, the mayor's comments around the big game yesterday. Um, thank you to the mayor. Thank you to our local delegation for helping us to bring that important legislation over the line and to create an extraordinary experience for our guests yesterday which dovetails into this conversation this morning around development and growth. And so thank you for the opportunity to be here today. But when we think about today, really, this is a discussion about tomorrow. And independent of the challenges of our collective past, and let's be candid, those challenges have been real. But all of those have been outweighed by the tremendous power and potential that has been woven into tomorrow. And so I would like to congratulate the mayor, the city, all of the leaders that join us now in building extraordinary optimism into tomorrow. Thank you, Mayor. Redevelopment activities are transformative as they involve more than just the physical structure. They bring together communities, attract more businesses, and strengthen the environment to promote economic development. The next two speakers represent neighborhoods that will be directly impacted um, by the reactivation of these buildings and the district as a whole. Betsy Johnson, president of Armory Quadrangle Civic Association, and Leo Florian, president of South End Citizens Council, both of whom were involved in the Citizens Advisory Committee that was established as part of that Court Square Amendment um, that was recently advanced. So I'd like both to, to join me. Uh, Betsy, if you'd like to go first. Betsy, thank you. Did you yeah. mic over or what? Okay. <laughs> thank you. He uh, asked me whether I biked or walked because uh, I'm the voice for 
part of all of this redevelopment is enhancing the streetscape and the walkability and the bikeability of all of this area. And with Leo, um, the Armory Quadrangle Civic Association, we're starting to call ourselves the uh, Metro Center Neighborhood Council because we, uh, this area is a neighborhood that includes the businesses, the entertainment areas, but a whole, but 6,000, from our end of it, and Leo can add his number, 6,000 residents um, of, and in fact, we, the city's recent uh, um, updating of neighborhood surveys show that we have the highest percentage of women of any of the neighborhood areas in the city. So this will, just being able to make this kind of development helps uh, just all of us in terms of the livability of our entire area as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. And just to follow up, um, earlier the mayor said that um, I'm a lifelong resident of Springfield and the South End. And I've <laughs> seen this, I've seen downtown, I've seen Main Street. I'm not gonna say how many years I'm gonna go back, but what a change, what a change. I've seen it through good times and bad. And there were some important times. The important time was when the tornado came through. Yeah. And when the tornado came through, our neighborhood was really hit. And there were people talking about, do we stay or do we leave? And the mayor at that time said, stick with us. I'm not giving up on that neighborhood. And the first thing we did, we rebuilt the South End Community Center. And then from there, once people saw that little bit of development, it's like, okay, let's hang on and see what happens. And they had confidence in him, and we had confidence enough to say, you know what, this is going to turn around. And then when MGM came in, for a small neighborhood, for the small neighborhood, don't forget, in the South End, we have Jeb Belize, who's been incredible in terms of developing the other end of Main Street. We're coming down. We're coming from the south. We're coming north. So between Jeb Belize and some of the other developments that are happening right on Main Street, right on Main Street. And don't forget also, our borders go to the river. The riverfront is in the south end of Springfield. And it's on the riverfront and, and part of the metro. We'll get, <laughs> um, but all of this, you know, years ago, like I said, if certain decisions weren't made and made correctly, I don't know if we'd be standing here today looking at a project like this. This is gonna be enormous for continuing, get that end of Main Street developed, and it's gonna work down, and we're gonna take care of the other part of Main Street, and we're gonna pull it all together and have a place where people are gonna to wanna to come. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I would like to personally thank my wonderful board who is fully committed to the citizens of Springfield and whom have a true passion to strengthen neighborhoods within our uh, beautiful, diverse city. Uh, to say a few words, I'd like to invite Armando Feliciano, Chair. Thank you, everybody. Um, the mayor said something very important when we first started here about Amanda being the first woman executive director for the Springfield Redevelopment Authority. But I also want to say that she has been one of the best Springfield Redevelopment Authority directors that we ever had. Um, her work ethic and her availability to the community has been incredible. Um, the board, the Springfield Redevelopment Authority and its members are excited to work with the mayor, excited to work with Amanda, and excited to work with Tim Chien. We all believe that Springfield is a catalyst for New England. We really believe that this is a great city, and we know that under the leadership of the mayor, our team, and uh, everyone involved in making this city, we're gonna make it greater. We're gonna make this city, we're gonna help the mayor uh, make this city one of the greatest places in this country to live and play. Thank you. Just to clean up, uh, the, the uh, 
these buildings, as we all know, are so important to our Main Street and that they were so critical that we actually had to take bold and decisive action to acquire them so that we can repurpose them and bring them back to life so that they are again breathing new life into Main Street, strengthening Main Street, and we can't wait to begin this process. As we come to an end in terms of getting out this uh, RFQ and the invitation uh, for the private sector to respond with their ideas and thoughts as to what can happen here, we can't wait to see new activity coming into downtown Springfield. Thank you very much. So in closing, through these important partnerships and future collaborations with the development community, we will continue this momentum in downtown and eclipse the nearly $1.5 billion in recent investment generated to date, all to realize the incredible potential in downtown and to bolster the city that we are proud of. Urban development is challenging, but we have already put in place many ingredients for success. I look forward to beginning discussions with the development community locally, regionally, and nationally on a vision uh, to see these once vibrant buildings come back to life. So please feel free to take a look at the SRA's website. Um, folks can grab the solicitation as well as view the video again if you would like. So I thank you all and everyone that spoke on behalf of, uh, so I appreciate it. I don't thank know you if very you have much. Any questions or comments? On, the yeah, the schedule, yeah. So the solicitation uh, is out today, uh, first day. Uh, the first part of the process is a request for qualifications and approach. Uh, so we're looking for developers to submit qualifications and approach to these buildings. That will be due back um, towards the end of March. Um, once we evaluate internally, we'll shortlist a few teams, approximately three, to advance to a formal request for proposals process. Uh, at which time we will get further into the actual development and the opportunities and the potential. Um, all of that leading to a land disposition agreement eventually that we would uh, like to um, look to close on towards the end of the summer, Matt, 23. This is, this is similar to what we did during the casino uh, entertainment complex of some years ago. We put out RFQs actually to, to dictate, set the table what we wanted which was most conducive for the city and the surrounding neighborhood areas. And at that time, uh, we had six suitors that were interested on it, which drove competition and gave me more leverage, the city administration more leverage. The cream did rise to the top with uh, uh, MGM uh, coming here. And then at that point in time, with developers, whether local, regional, or throughout the nation, national, they know what, how the table is set what we're looking for, mm -hmm. and then we'll go through a second process of the RPs about what you're going to put across, and that's been quite successful for us. So there's no misunderstandings. This is what we're looking for, and if you can bring it to the table, we'll roll out the uh, red carpet. To add this sense of clarity on that, uh, ultimately, uh, it is our expectation that by the end of this coming summer, we will have a development plan that we are supportive of, and we will be advancing a preferred developer to the city for consideration uh, to implement that plan. It can be a, a developer or a team. But it's going to go with a package, all three buildings. That, that, uh, we are encouraging that all three buildings go. Um, a developer would have to explain to us why they were uh, taking one or two of the properties and leaving one behind. But our, our expectation is all three. We like, Paul, we like to see a clean sweep. Don't leave anything lying around. Clean sweep. Thank you. Get it done. Now, you have another question? Ready. Sure. So there, there's two pieces to that. Um, the first one is one of the things that we're very focused on is ground floor activation um, in terms of bringing activity to the street level and getting pedestrian engagement with activity that's happening at the, the street level. Um, so that is one of the focuses of uh, the RFQ. We are very specific that you have to be bringing forward projects that have a high degree of ground floor activation. And then we are looking at uh, adaptive reuse for the, the upper levels, and that could be a combination of many 
different uses, uh, whether they be housing in a combination with office. Uh, so there's so many other you know, potential uses that could go on the upper floors. And we're really looking to the development community's creativity as to what the market needs are and how these properties can respond to that need. Um, in terms of why it, it's taken a little bit for us to, to get to here, um, there were a couple of cleanup issues that uh, we needed to, to advance. Um, one is we needed to finalize and get approved the master planning work by the, the city council. Um, and that is the Main Street Convention Center master plan. And the secondary piece on that was we needed to have the 12th Amendment to the Urban Renewal Plan fully completed and approved by both the city and the state. Um, and the third piece that delayed us a little bit with everybody else on a variety of different things is COVID. <laughs> yeah, just to let you know, Director Sheen and I were working with the financial institutions four or five years ago. Uh, and then obviously COVID hit negotiating that uh, we want those properties. And they're not going to lay dormant. They're not going to lay, there was no, dis uh, there was uh, no investment whatsoever. Uh, so that also, and we had to negotiate a deal with them uh, that we're going to uh, take over the proper properties temporarily. Because our goal, as you can see now, so besides COVID, again, you had to negotiate, we had to negotiate with financial institutions about releasing that foreclosure to meet the city of Springfield on it. And we put our money where our mouth is. Now we're ready to roll. And uh, there's great opportunity here, as you can see in the video. And uh, we welcome uh, developers, whether local, regional, national, be part of the magic that's going on in Springfield right now. Yeah, the uh, SRA had gone out for a grant through Mass Development and had secured uh, just under a million dollars to help with the stabilization efforts there. Um, so we're working on, um, on that scope of work, which will be probably forthcoming in the spring. So yeah. what is that work? Yeah, some stabilization work of the building structure itself. Uh, there's uh, mechanical systems. Um, I mean, the list can go on. But we're trying to get to, you know, the items that are most critically important um, to help aid in the development in the future. I mean, they have this investment. I mean, uh, but they have incredible potential and opportunity. So I think that is, um, you know, the driver here. Mass development. Danny Revere was a former mayor of Lawrence. Great friendship with him. He's been a great partner to us. Again, as I indicated earlier, uh, and Director Sheehan, we're here to set the table. So sometimes you got to spend a little money in order to uh, make money, economic development, and create a, four, a good four-letter word, jobs, J-O-B-S. Uh, so that's what we're doing about setting uh, the table and making it very attractive uh, to come down here uh, to the city of Springfield. Uh, they're so, like less than 10%, I'd say, for the portfolio. And mostly that smaller office building. Yeah, smaller office. There's a tenancy with uh, attorneys that are local. Um, we do have Tony's Barber, famous uh, barber on the first floor. The post office is in the Colonial Block building as well. It's out to bid right now. Uh, we intend to be into construction this spring and going through the summer into the fall. So possibly this fall? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Again, projects that uh, people said never will get done in the city of Springfield are getting done every day and will continue to get done. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.